Welcome to lecture 57. This is on spatial and network analysis in GIS. This is a very important lecture as far as the GIS capabilities in analysis are concerned. In this lecture, we will take some of the examples how the spatial analysis and network analysis could be used to derive various useful results in different applications. So, let us begin the lecture. When we uh, talk about the analysis in GIS, uh, we uh, basically carry out traditionally several tasks from the GIS. Maybe the input the data, updating the maps, uh, data uh, compilation, data conversion, data interpolation, data storage and organization of this data. Then we carry out the manipulation of the data and spatial analysis the next step which is very very important in GIS and then finally uh, the output presentation. Once we derive the results then we can represent the output in graphical, in pictorial form or in uh, digital form. So, what is the spatial uh, analysis? In fact, the uh, one of the best capabilities or one of the uh, best feature in GIS is the uh, power of spatial analysis. We have more than one map and we want to carry out the analysis using all the maps or using uh, part of the information from the each map and then want to derive the results. So, in this uh, spatial analysis, we are dealing with the geographical problems. We are modeling them together into certain criteria, into certain logic. We want to derive the results for uh, after processing the data, explore the pattern and examine the results. You know, we can do the trend analysis, we can do the pattern analysis by spatial analysis. Now, it is very, very important to understand the geographical questions, how, why, when. Then geographical relationship between the two parameters or more parameters. So, everything is related to everything in the space. So, we have to establish those relationships, how a thing is related to other things, surrounding things. Then what are the geographical problems and how to uh, derive the results or derive the action plan to uh, uh, to solve those problems, geographical problems. We want, we can also determine the size, distribution, the pattern, the contiguity, neighborhood, shape analysis, orientation of the feature. So, this all we can carry out from the spatial analysis of the data. This is very, very effective if we want to find out the suitability of a certain site. So, I want to find out the suitability of uh, a certain shopping complex or find out the suitability of the airport, want to de detect the change pattern or the hidden pattern from the data set. So, uh, change analysis. So, this all is a part of the spatial analysis. So, we can carry out lot of activity using the spatial analysis. In this lecture, we will learn some of the important things. Now, the role of the GIS is uh, in a spatial analysis very, very important because GIS will offer unique capabilities to us which we cannot derive from the other software. The first thing is that all that information is geographically referenced, geotag data linked to the coordinate system. So, when we derive the results, we can actually transfer our results directly onto the ground with the help of these geographical coordinates and that help us in taking the devising the action plans. So, spatial attribute data updating capabilities are there, data conversion from one format to the another format. Then we can carry out the manipulation of the data, presentation of the results and these spatial tools which are available in GIS. They are very, very important for establishing the relationship between several parameters together. Now, you can see that how we are uh, combining these data sets together. Very simple example is that we have a uh, digital elevation model map, different colors are indicating the different heights, the darker color indicates the uh, higher regions. Then we have a watershed map where uh, different watersheds are shown by the polygons, different polygons. Then we have a, within the watershed itself, there is a stream network. So, this is stream network is a line feature. So, several interconnected streams uh, are shown in the area. Then there is a water body also. 
in the same area. There is a reservoir, big reservoir, so polygon feature. So we have uh, several layers together. We have to combine them together. Now we have to do maybe a simple overlay analysis or maybe we want to use a certain Boolean operation or we want to use a certain arithmetical operation or logical operation in order to combine them together and derive very useful result. So GIS uh, can be very conveniently used because some of the data here is a raster data like digital elevation model is a raster data and some of the data was the vector data like uh, you have seen the drainage network, stream network, you have seen the sub watershed boundaries. So, all that combined together will give you um, the uh, raster and vector database. Now, this database, now you can actually carry out some kind of a analysis from that. You want to find out uh, uh, whether there is any drainage network in a particular sub watershed or not or whether that sub watershed is a part of that reservoir or according to the elevation you want to um, carry out the analysis, you want to selectively uh, identify some of the watersheds that can be done. So the modeling and analysis in GI is the best part and we can carry out this modeling and analysis uh, for various applications whether it is a sustainable planning as you can see here or we carry out some weather forecasting, we carry out the ocean modeling, we carry out some network management or cellular coverage analysis, how much one tower area will cover like a buffer analysis. So, there are several ways by which we can use these different data sets together, combine them together, define a certain criteria, define certain rules and then carry out the spatial analysis. So, this um, GIS will provide us very fundamental tools to carry out the spatial analysis. Whether we want a simple uh, overlay analysis or we want some kind of a logical uh, overlay. For example, we want to know which are the watershed, who are the, uh, which are the watersheds uh, situated above 1000 meter elevation. So, it will only highlight those sub watersheds which are situated above 1000 meter elevation. So, you are putting up certain logic in order to carry out uh, the analysis. You can carry out the manipulation of the spatial data on several layers or uh, on the combined layer together. We can also do proximity analysis which is very very important because as we know that geographically one thing is related to the other in terms of the coordinate system, distance, direction. So, that proximity analysis will help us in identifying the which are the polygons surrounding a polygon. So, which are the cities at 300 meter distance from a, a particular city. So, that proximity analysis is very, very helpful identifying the feature which are in the nearest uh, region to a point feature, to a line feature or to a polygon feature. And then on the basis of the uh, features which are present on the proximity, we can carry out certain analysis. Then spatial correlation analysis, a very, very important to uh, reveal the relationship between the several attributes. So, if I show you a big table, maybe it is very, very difficult to identify what I want to show. But if I try to establish a correlation between the two parameters and show in terms of a, a graphical representation in terms of the correlation coefficient which we derive from those two parameters, it is understood, well understood in the form of a graph, in the form of a figure, in the form of a spatial map. So, we can carry out some kind of a uh, correlation and then also carry out the query. This is a most important aspect of the spatial analysis. So, we want to carry out a point in polygon operation, buffering, intersection, dissolving. These are the other operations. Uh, we can use more than one operation together. Uh, suppose we want to do the query, uh, we, want, we can use buffering, we can also use the union intersection command and then carry out the uh, some kind of a query analysis in the GIS environment. So, it is a very kind of a complex process when we are talking of the GIS spatial analysis. Now, it can provide me when I talk about the query, it can provide me the answer where a thing is situated, 
what is there at a given particular location. So things like those questions, how, why, when, you know, this GIS spatial analysis can provide me the answer from the database which we have created. Now, it is a process which involves several steps, multi-step process. Multi-processes are involved in order to derive the useful information uh, according to the criteria which the user has defined. Now, this uh, uh, require sometimes a special queries. That means we are doing the query from the attribute tables only. So that is called the a special queries. When we are carrying out some query where spatial maps are involved that is called the spatial queries. And when we are creating the new data sets also from the uh, original database. So that is the relational database management where we are creating a new data sets from the original data sets. So there are several, several operations which we are carrying out in spatial analysis. Uh, broadly, you know, they are called the horizontal operations and they call the vertical operation. So, when we are dealing with one single layer in a map and use that layer in, and extract the information according to our criteria, that is called the horizontal operations. But when we are dealing with the several layers and one layer is stacked over the other because they are geographically referenced together, they are called the analytical procedure where multiple data layers are involved is called the vertical operation. So, most of the time we find that uh, we are dealing with the vertical operation, several layers together integrated in a work. So, what kind of queries are there? As I told you, two type of queries you can create a special query uh, where um, you are dealing with a tabular data. Uh, attribute data. So, uh, example is written, suppose we have a land parcel map and in the table the cost is also associated with that. So, we can find out all land parcels where the value is greater than 100,000. So, which are the land parcel in the entire area where the value is greater than 10,000. So, if I make that as a special query, it will only pick up those polygons, those land parcels according to the criteria defined here. If I talk about the spatial queries, so here what we are doing is the uh, example is land parcel that completely lie within the flood plain of 200 meter buffer from the river. So I create a buffer of 200 meter, I have a map, I have a land parcel map, I use these two maps together and carry out the special query that find out the land parcels which are within that floodplain zone of 200 meter buffer. So, it will highlight those uh, particular uh, polygons land parcels. Then uh, th sometimes you know when we are making the query in most of the GIS package including ARC GIS, we are using the SQL language structured or the standard query language. So, the short form is SQL and this SQL gives me further flexibility to mathematically correlate several layers together using uh, certain uh, query. So, this is pronounced as SQL. It was uh, developed in 1970s and this is a standard for accessing the relational database and most of the time we are having those relational database uh, with our GIS database. So, we can have three types of use either we have this standalone queries or we have very high level of programming or embedded in the other application. So, SQL is another important part of the GIS where we can write certain expression, link that expression with the help of those maps, input maps and get the output. Basically, there are three types of uh, SQL statements are there and those three types of SQL statements are called data definition language DDL. The second is called the data management language DML and the third one is called the data control language DCL. So, what we are doing in the data definition language is clear from the name also. We are creating, we are altering and we are deleting the data. So, you create table, you create some kind of an index from those tabular data data manipulation language, you can retrieve the data, you can manipulate 
the data. So we are using the commands like select, update, delete, insert those commands we can use uh, here. The third is the data control language. So we control the security of the data and the commands which we are using in the grant, create, user, drop, user, sync, uh, all these commands are used. Now I give you very simple example here that there is a map of vegetation cover, different types of forest are there, different type of vegetation is present. Now we carry out some kind of a SQL. So we have to create some kind of a expression which is shown down below. I wanted to show the uh, coverage of the sal forest for example, selecting a sal forest from a forest or vegetation layer. So I want to see the geographical distribution and the uh, locations where the sal forest is present in the entire region. So all that uh, purple color what you see is the uh, answer of my query. So it will highlight only those polygons with the sal forest in the entire area. If I want some statistics about it, I want to know what is the minimum area, what is the maximum area. I can define the unit, it could be in acre, it could be meter square, kilometer square and also I can find out the total area, how much is the total area under the soil forest. So this is a very very simple kind of a uh, spatial analysis which I can get from a single map. Now here I can explore the patterns, so spatial analysis is very very useful in exploring the pattern. So now I can see are soil forest randomly scattered? when I get the um, polygon selected or they are clustered. Is there any pattern they are making? Are they, they well distributed? They are randomly distributed? Do they occur in a particular portion of the forest uh, a partic in a situated in the uh, particular region and what are the distribution of the uh, tree density? So that kind of uh, analysis we can further carry out and we can explore the pattern with respect to the surrounding features. The other examples in the same reason could be isolating for more analysis. Are there any mature salt tree stands and large trees and open crowds and where are they? So now I am linking more than one parameters. So mature salt trees with large trees and open grounds. So I wanted to know the location of that and you can see that the expression is written over here which is in SQL and it two parameters are linked with the expression end. So I want both the things to happen here and I want to identify those particular mature salt trees which are large trees number one size is bigger and uh, open ground. So here you can see in this figure the um, light blue color, these colors, they are all those soil forest areas which are satisfying the criteria which is defined here. So others are also the soil forest area but they are not actually meeting the criteria which uh, I have defined in order to get the results. So I will get uh, the geographical distribution, I will get the location also, I will get the area of such kind of forest which I want here by having two parameters. So we can have likewise several parameters together. Now this is example of exploring the spatial relationship. So what fraction of the salt trees for example are intersected by the roads. So they are intersected by the road if you superimpose the road network on the top of the soil forest area then you can find out that uh, uh, the, the highlighted one here with the yellow color they are those areas which are intersected by different roads. So the forest which are intersected by the roads have been selected by the software. Now suppose I want another spatial relationship. What type of trees are adjacent to the soil forest? So what type of trees are there adjacent to that? 
forest area. So, it will highlight uh, the neighborhood areas and find out which trees are present in it. So, that way we can explore the relationships together. Now, this is the example of a query which involve now surface. Now, here what surface is the first one is a digital elevation model. Different colors again are indicating the different heights. So, we have a digital elevation model and we have again the uh, same map, Sal forest map and we want to know that uh, uh, which are the areas where Sal forest is lying above 1500 meter elevation. So, we want to consider only those areas which are above 1500 meter elevation. So, this in the first left map you can see that those particular areas have been shown by the pink color. So, all that identified with the help of the this is a raster based query which we are making because the elevation data is in the raster format. So, we identify the soil forest which are above a certain elevation range present there. Now, you want to further establish the relationship between the two layers. Now, you can see the example here uh, when you are establishing the uh, relationship between the two layer one is called the target layer and this is which contains the feature which are to be selected and another is called the source layer which contains the feature which are being compared to. So, in the example which I have shown here is that we want to know select the salt forest that are intersected by the road. So, you can see now the blow up that we have a road feature, we have the salt forest feature and all these highlighted one are those features which are intersected uh, by the roads. So, there is one polygon here on the top, another is on the um, right side you can see that they are not intersected by any of the roads. Now, if I do the query other way around that select the roads that are intersected by the Sal forest. So, it will now select the road pattern. So, um, it will highlight the road because I want to select the road in earlier case I want to select the Sal forest area. So, depending upon the query the nature of the query has changed the same database is there, but this time I will get all the roads highlighted where the Sal forest boundary is intersecting. So, that is the way I can get the length of the road also if I want to. So, I can get the measurements also. So, this is the way we can carry out the analysis. Then proximity analysis uh, in spatial analysis is also as I told you very important. So, we can carry out for example, here find out whether the target features are within a specified distance of the source feature or not. The query is volcanoes within 100 kilometer of an interstate. So, you can see here there are very large number of volcanoes which are shown by the red triangles, but according to the uh, proximity analysis we want the volcanoes which are within 100 kilometer of interstate. So, the uh, blue, the light blue color here, those circles are those volcanoes which are within 100 kilometer, and the red one here in the figure are actually those volcanoes which are away from, uh, which are more than 100 kilometer away. Another example here is shown select the river that is intersecting the Texas. So, Texas county is intersected by a network of rivers and that network of river has been selected. So, here we have a river map and we have the county maps, we are superimposing them together, placing a certain analysis, spatial analyst query and finding out the answer. Another example here is that you select the cities which are 20 miles of an interstate highway. So, in the left side those cities have been selected which are within 20 miles. There are several cities, but they are away. They are not within that given uh, query system 20 miles. So, all that highlighted one here the uh, light uh, blue color which you see is those cities which are within 20 miles from the interstate highway. Uh, the next query here on the right side is 
that you select the counties that are within 200 miles of the Denver. So, there is a Denver here county and find out uh, the all the other counties which are 200 miles. So, this is called the proximity analysis. So, within 200 miles uh, proximity all that is selected. So, these spatial relationships are really playing very very important role whether we are talking of the point in point feature, we are talking of the point in line feature, point in area feature or there could be the combination of line in line feature, line in area and area in area. So, we can actually find out the relationship whether we use any of the combination uh, the spatial relationship can be determined this. Now, there are various types of analysis which we can carry out from our data set. Now, there could be a single layer operation as you have seen from one single layer you can find out the sal forest. There could be multi layer operations we are using two layers or more than two layers in order to determine the results according to the given criteria. Then when we do the spatial modeling you know we uh, can also carry out the statistical modeling we can carry out the predictive analysis on the basis of the previous data on the basis of the past history the uh, extrapolation of the results can be carried out in order to predict for the future. We can carry out the point pattern analysis. So, you have the point features and along the point features you can carry out uh, some kind of a buffer analysis and then carry out the further analysis. Network analysis is when there is a a network of stream or network of the roads or network of railway line, network of the pipeline. So, anything which makes a uh, connecting network you can carry out that analysis um, very easily and this kind of a problem uh, in transportation engineering for example, we want to find out the shortest route between the two points. So, the network analysis can handle such kind of problems very very effectively. Then it could be a surface analysis. So, when we are talking of the surface analysis naturally we are talking of the, uh, the data which represent the entire surface and here uh, digital elevation model for example, will play very very important role. Grid based analysis. So, grid analysis is uh, where we have uh, grid by grid information and we carry out the uh, analysis grid by grid with the help of the uh, different functions. Now, types of the spatial analysis when we are talking of that we know that there are two types of data we have the raster data which is graded based data and we have the vector data. Now, in the raster data model we can carry out several spatial analysis operations this could be a neighborhood operations we have one grid and in the periphery of that uh, immediate periphery we will have 8 more grids in a 3 by 3 window. So, we can carry out some kind of a neighborhood operations from that as you have seen that we find out the steepest slope direction out of the 8 possible directions. Then connectivity functions which particular cell is connected to the next cell. So, when we do the flow routing kind of a problem is steepest slope then we determine the connectivity also. You can carry out the query, you can carry out the classification, reclassification, you can do the measurement function. When you are doing the measurement function the smallest unit for measurement becomes the size of the grid here. Now, you can do uh, the uh, spatial analysis on vector based GIS vector type of a data and it is not similar to that what you are doing on the raster analysis. For example, the measurements which you are doing on a raster data it will be the dimension of the cell, but measurements which you are doing on the vector data it will uh, determine the value on the basis of the coordinates which have been stored uh, to represent that particular feature. So, if you want to know the distance between the two points then it will take the coordinates of those two points and determine the distance. So, that is the measurement from the vector data, but it will depend upon the length of the grid cell uh, in case of the raster data. So, the determination uh, of the measurements are different in vector based systems the analysis are done by direct search in the database compared with raster 
GIS, some of the vector GIS operations are more accurate. And why they are more accurate? Because you are representing the true shape, true size, true orientation of a particular figure. So, here the for, uh, for example, it will depend upon the size of the pixel. If you want to determine the area of the feature, then you have to count how many number of pixels which are falling in a particular polygon and then you determine the area of that polygon. But in case of the vector data, the area would be determined with the help of the coordinates which are forming the. Now, uh, some uh, uh, spatial analysis are slower like overlaying the layers and finding out the buffers while some are faster. If you want to find out the shortest path uh, using the road network from the vector data, this is much much faster analysis. Now, in the spatial interpolation is there where you have only few data, scanty data and you want the data in the entire region. So, sometimes this interpolation is done. Suppose we have a rainfall data or groundwater data, water well data of few points in our area or temperature data and we want uh, the data analysis for the entire region. So, we want to estimate the values at the unsampled location. It happens with the elevation data also many times we have very scattered elevation data and we want to create a DEM. So, we have to do some interpolation of the data. So, we are actually uh, using this to produce some kind of a contour surfaces and the data which is interpolated is this approximate data. It is not a very very accurate data, it depends upon the algorithm also which we are using. And many of the GIS software now have this capability that they will interpolate the data from the uh, uh, scanty data which is available to you. So, whether we are talking of uh, the uh, DEM, whether we are talking of the um, temperature data or the rainfall data, point data available, we have two commonly used methods. One is known as the inverse distance weighting method IDW very popular method and another is known as the Kriging method. So, I am not explaining you these methods here in this lecture, but these are the two broad methods which are used to carry out the interpolation from the data which is available to us in scanty. So, this is a special interpolation. Now, you can see that circles here are indicating the temperature. So, we had the temperature data available at few points only. At different points here, it is scanty and this is the South Africa region and the temperature variation is shown. So, you have point data of the temperature values, uh, but this point data has been interpolated for the extrapolated for the whole region. So, now you can see in the form of a uh, different colors or you can draw the contours also, temperature contours also from this data set. Now, uh, overlay analysis, we know that there, there are various ways of carrying out the overlay in the GIS. So, this is the example and there are some features which are shown here, how you carry out the overlay analysis. Uh, very simple is that uh, um, union command or intersect command or uh, identity command or erase command, clip command, split command or symmetrical differences command. So, these are the different commands are there when we are using maps together. So, uh, what will be the net effect of the on the output that is shown over here. So, here we are not actually uh, taking the part of the map, but we are taking one complete map, another complete map, applying this particular spatial analysis function and deriving the results. For example, in the case uh, of union command, we have a map which is shown by the horizontal two categories. Then there is a circular map and combination of this will be the entire area set. So, we can use the different data sets together, combine them according to the analysis which is required. So, these are very important commands. This is the update commands which we are using to update the features in the particular area. So, you have the update feature map which is shown by the circular map and this is the output which contains now the entire region after updating. So, here it shows the uh, you know how the overlay activities are going on. We have two uh, vector maps here. 
the top one is indicating there are three classes A, B and C and the middle map is showing that there are four classes which are denoted by letter 1, 2, 3 and 4 and when you combine them together you get uh, with the superimposition that you can get several polygons which are created and in the tabular data also you will see that uh, uh, the first map is the county map where A, B, C is there and you have the tabular data of the county map. The second map is indicating there are that these are the different uh, locations data, well data and then uh, you are actually clubbing them together and you can get some kind of a uh, combined table, tabular data is also combined. So, when you are doing overlay operations in the GIS, you can see the map one map one where we have two category map two where again we have two category with the purple color when you combine them together you can get a map something like uh, out which is shown in the output uh, where we have now several polygons but the same map when you are overlaying together in the raster format you have a grid cells of the same feature which are shown above then you have a grid cells of the second map with the letter 3 denoted and then the combination of the map will have several grid cells. So, area computation of both these will be different because one it is dependent in vector data actual coordinate system and the second one raster data will be the uh, grid cell based system. So, you can overlay them together you can overlay using some kind of a maximum value minimum value average value you can combine them together some kind using some kind of a logic. The last part is very important here which is the network analysis part in GIS and here this will allow you to find out the shortest route the closest facility or uh, defining the service area which is based on the travel time. So, network analysis is based on the graphic theory and it is allowing uh, us to model the flow of information from one system to another. So, this is a straight line a network model. The second one is the branching there are several branches coming and the third one is a circuit model which is a closed kind of area. What you can get from the network characteristics you can get length, you can get direction, you can get connectivity and you can get the pattern. So, this is the example which shows that you know how 6 cities are connected through the network these exam 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 these are those city locations which are connected and the distances between them are shown now one has to find out the uh, what is the shortest distance. So, this is kind, kind of a traveling salesman problem a salesman has to travel from one end to the another end. So, what is the optimum route one should follow in order to cover all those cities. So, one can find out you know when using different routes the path length is coming out to be 69 in one case in second case it is coming out to be 66 in third case it is coming out to be 57 in fourth case it is coming out to be 66. So, this is considered as the optimal path uh, um, to cover entire area with uh, uh, minimum length path length. So, this um, London Underground Metro network or any other network, network you know they are working on the basis of the network analysis because one network is connected to the another network and optimization is done. So, this location allocation analysis basically is uh, another application of the network analysis. We can uh, find out the best sites which can serve the allocated demand. If we make a criteria we can find out what is the best site using the location and allocation analysis and the example could be if we want to locate a, a warehouse, we want to locate the fast food location, fire station and schools that can also be done with the help of that location allocation analysis. So, this is based on the Euclidean distance the minimum distance between the two points. So, um, for example, it could be a customer base, it could be a demand based location or potential sites or existing facilities or the street network. So, everywhere this Euclidean, Euclidean distance is playing very very important role in order to give us the idea. So, example here is that um, we want to locate a particular store and we want to find out which is the ideal situation. So, the uh, these are uh, 
different circles are indicating the uh, the demand and the magnitude of the demand so bigger circle mean the demand is bigger the small circle is shown the demand is smaller but what are the available sites so we if we superimpose that on the demand of the customers then we can see now the green one are those available sites and now we'll use some kind of a criteria maybe the distance criteria so this is a, a vehicle routing problem you know how to connect uh, if we choose some kind of a site that this is the best site then we have to connect uh, to those uh, centers which are the demand centers customer centers so uh, optimal path can be derived now on the basis of this uh, network and finally on the basis of that you can select which are the best location which can cover on the basis of the vehicle route which on the basis of the distance can cover the entire area so one can see that these are the three locations because the radial lines are indicating that these are the distances and covering the whole area so three uh, optimum locations are selected so finally uh, we can use the spatial analysis and network analysis for search and browsing the database. We can carry out the interpolation of the scanty data. We can establish the spatial relationship between the different parameters. We can answer the questions of the query, how many, where are they. We can apply the Boolean operators in order to carry out the analysis. We can find out the shortest route between the two points. We can do location and location modeling and we can divide the network also into various segments depending upon the priority. So this is all about this lecture. Thank you.